Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Fond du Lac Area Women's Funds Project Table Talk. I'm Maria Turner, the Executive Director of the Fond du Lac Area Women's Fund, and today I'm so excited to have guests joining us to discuss Women in Construction Week. It is the week of celebration of women in this particular area of the workforce and we are so blessed to have two guests here from cd smith uh, we have amy schneider who is a project engineer and sarah wright who is a project manager um, we've invited these guests today because as i noted we want to talk about national women in construction week it's celebrating women in a non-conventional role in the construction industry. It's an annual um, celebration, and we're really excited to be able to take part in that this year. Uh, it fits in with what we do on Project Table Talk. A lot of times we try to discuss topics that people may not know a lot about um, related to women and girls, and I feel like this is one of those areas that um, whether you are coming from a job site or a boardroom, uh, you know, women contribute to strategic decision making in all aspects um, and in pre construction, project management, estimating, uh, field labor, engineering, and more. So, those are all uh, spaces that I am personally not all that familiar with. So, I think our listeners are going to be excited to hear about all of those as well. Obviously, at the Women's Fund, a part of our mission is to edify and encourage diversity and inclusion in the workforce. Uh, we are simply a better community when we can accomplish this. Interestingly and coincidentally, the theme of Women in Construction Week this year is Envision Equity. So that uh, just goes seamlessly into what we are trying to do here at the Fond du Lac Area Women's Fund. Um, and so let's welcome our guests um, and start out getting a bit of background on them. So we'll start with Sarah. Sarah, tell us a little bit about yourself and your career path. Hi, my name is Sarah Wright. I attended UW Platteville for civil engineering and I was an intern for CD Smith Construction going into my senior year of college. And then when I graduated college, I started with CD Smith full time as a project engineer and then worked my way to be an assistant project manager. And now currently I am a project manager at CD Smith. I've been here for about four years now full time and a part of my day to day tasks are making sure that we are maintaining schedules on our projects, meeting the budget, making sure the building is going to be a quality product and making sure everybody is working safely. Um, some of the projects I've worked on most recently is the Wapan Christian Home Project, the SSM Beaver Dam Clinic. I'm doing some additions at Mercury Marine right now and also working on a school referendum in Columbus. Wow, that sounds like um, a lot on your plate. Um, congratulations for managing all of those things going on at once. Um, I uh, give you huge kudos for that because um, you know the, the people that can keep other people on schedule, wonderful. <laughs> So thanks for that, um, Sarah, that information. Amy, tell us a little bit about your career path. Uh, I'm Amy Schneider. Um, I graduated from UW River Falls with a Bachelor's of Agricultural Studies. I have been with C.D. Smith's Construction for about five years. I am currently a project engineer. I have um, worked on the SECURE project located in Fox River Crossing. I have worked on the acuity project in Sheboygan. I worked on the industrial projects of Green Bay Packaging, both in Green Bay and in Chicago. And I'm currently helping Sarah on the Mercury Marine projects in Fond du Lac. Part of my project engineer roles details, it involves working with the superintendents on their daily tasks, working with the project manager on financials, um, coordinating schedules with both the subcontractors and our field employees and helping with the relationship between the owner and our field guys. 
you know, one of the things I'm hearing both of you talk about is your role in being sort of that relational individual um, helping to coordinate things between people, which I think, um, you know, not to be, you know, gender biased in any way, but I think women do that really well. And so I love that you both have roles where you're bringing people together and um, keeping things um, going in the right direction. So let's talk a little bit about that, um, that gender piece. Obviously, the construction industry is male dominated. Um, and so I think what surprises people or what gets people curious about women who go into this industry is what, you know, what drew you to the role um, of going into the construction industry? And, you know, I pause a little bit and I think, well, we're, did you have any reservations or concerns about that? Because um, anytime women have to step into a space where there aren't a lot of other women um, to support them, that might be a little bit of an uncomfortable place to venture into. So let's talk a little bit about that, um, Amy, um, what, you know, the idea of what drew you into the, this role. So part of it for me was that my husband is actually in construction. He's actually an assistant superintendent here at C.D. Smith. Okay. So I enjoyed listening to him tell his stories when he came home at the end of the day. You know, we'd sit down, we have our supper, we talk about it. Um, and actually, I was on maternity leave when we had made a decision for me to start seeking elsewhere for employment. Mm. And C.D. Smith was one of my goal companies for me to reach out to. And... I ended up receiving a phone call and got hired on as a project coordinator. And I wanted a family oriented company to work for. And I found that in CD Smith. Mm -hmm. awesome. So was I concerned about not having a construction background? Yes, but this company has been great with their culture and teaching me and coaching me on how to develop my roles. So. Awesome. Um, that's, you know, anytime I think uh, you mentioned you were out on maternity leave, so you're a mom, right? And I think I am. that weighs into a lot of decision making for women, you know, whether or not there's going to be a balance, whether or not there's going to be recognition of that whole family uh, dynamic. And so I love to hear that uh, that was actually a piece that drew you to the industry, which I think you know, might be a little surprising for folks. They might not think that that would be um, a space where where that would happen. So that sounds really great. Sarah, do you want to also respond to what drew you into the construction industry? Yes. So I attended UW Platteville um, because I always loved math and science. So I ended up in an engineering um, field, but through my classes at college, all of my construction courses and my construction management classes, they always got me so excited. Um, my professors down there were super encouraging. Um, and I always felt so happy to go to class and learn about estimating and what the construction world has to offer. And then through my internships um, at C.D. Smith, it reinforced that I really did want to go into construction. It's awesome, um, Sarah, because, you know, I think at the Women's Fund, we are always looking to support um, girls who might have... Uh, skills in the STEM, you know, the STEM areas, mathematics and science and things like that. Because again, those are places where there hasn't been traditionally a lot of encouragement um, to build those skills for girls. And so kudos to you for going into a space um, that not a lot of girls might venture into. You know, we're not told, or at least my generation was not always told that that's, you know, you're good at math or, you know, you're really good at science. You should really pursue that. That wasn't a message that was necessarily um you know given to us as girls um at, in my age group. Um, I know my, my girls and, and, um, you know, obviously you're a little bit younger, I think, <laughs> than me. Um, uh, it's good to see that that's shifting and that there's not this, uh, barrier or, and, or fear, um, to get involved in that. So, um, love to hear that. Uh, you know, one of the things that in prepping for this conversation today, 
um, I uncovered a, a few statistics that I want to share as we're uh, discussing things here. So let me share those with the audience. According to the status of women data, nearly half of the U.S. labor force, 46.8%, is women. Uh, according to Becker's Hospital Review, 77% of healthcare workers are female. Business Insider reports that 76% of teachers are female. And I think, you know, when we think about women in careers and going back, you know, decades and generations, uh, nurses and teachers are the two that immediately come to mind. So it's interesting that statistically, those are still two of the highest uh, areas that employ women. Um, a report released in 2021 by the construction exec Com reveals that 10% of construction industry is populated by women. So you can see it went from 77 and 76% to 10% in the construction industry. And this percentage includes administrative and office roles, as well as field employees. So let's look at that, you know, discrepancy a little bit. Why do you think that number is so low, Sarah? Um, so I think that number is so low is because young girls and women don't necessarily know the opportunities that are available to them in the construction industry as a whole. Okay. And um, Amy, what are, what are your thoughts on that as well? I agree with Sarah. I think when people look at or think about construction, they automatically think physical. I can't physically do it. I can't do the work that the men are doing out in the field when they don't realize the amount of roles that are available, um, not just on the field and out on the construction site, we have estimators that are female, we have a marketing department, we have a project engineer, we have project managers that take us to help the project be successful. Mm -hmm. So I want young girls, ladies to realize what opportunities are available for them in the construction industry. Yeah, you know, I think that's a really important um, piece to bring out because like with any um, industry, right? We've, we've established certain stereotypes related to that. And so I think you're spot on when you talk about the idea when we, when you say the word construction, people's minds immediately go to, you know, having a sledgehammer in your hand and, um, you know, this old fashioned idea of what construction looked like, right? And it's like, hello, we have to come into present day, we have to realize that, you know, not only has that amount of labor changed, you know, like, it's not as manual labor intensive as it once was, you know, first and foremost, and the fact that there's just all of these other types of roles that go into making the entire project come to fruition. Mm -hmm. So I think that is an important um, aspect to bring out. Um, let's talk a little bit about C.D. Smith Construction, obviously one of um, uh, Fond du Lac's um, premier um, uh, businesses, not just in the realm of construction, but also just for what they do in the community. I mean, we're so thankful to have the partnership with C.D. Smith on, on various levels. You know, we were able to come at one point and do a green dot training, which was so rewarding um, to be able to give to them um, and their employees a training that the Women's Fund feels so passionate about in trying to change the direction of, of violence in our community. So we love that they were welcoming to doing that. We love how invested they are in um, getting involved with various nonprofits in the community. Um, let's talk a little bit about how many women work at CD Smith Construction currently. Sarah. Yeah, so current, Currently, we have 45 women who are employed at C.D. Smith, both in the field and the office, which makes up about 8% of our um, workforce. But we are not stopping there. We are actively working on bringing more women in, and this is going to be an ongoing um, item that we're working on. 
Yeah, that's awesome. So, you know, we talked about those national statistics being at 10%, 8%. You're basically right on par with that. It sounds like you have goals to um, shatter that amount, which, um, you know, I think that that would be awesome. Um, let's see, is there, um, is there anything like we've talked a little bit about um, people not necessarily knowing what types of jobs are available. Can you talk to us a little bit, Amy, about if there are any particular degrees that need to be in place to work in construction or what type of job training is available? Um, you know, just this whole idea of a bit about the trades and women working in carpentry, iron, masonry, all of those um, aspects of the construction field. Yeah, so you definitely do not need a degree in construction to be working here. I am living proof of that. Um, as I mentioned in the beginning, I have a degree in agricultural studies. Not quite sure, you know, how that plays into this role, but as I was hired on with C.D. Smith as a project coordinator, they taught me and trained me and coached me to help me be successful in my job. And that's what we'll continue to do both in the office or in the field. As Sarah had said, we have 45 ladies that work for this company, both in the office and out in the field. So there is much advancement or opportunity for people who do not have a construction background to come and apply and work for C.D. Smith Construction. As long as they're willing to work and to learn, this company will take them places. Mm -hmm. You know, it's interesting. Then, oh, I'm sorry. Go typically, ahead. Um, just to add a little bit about the field, um, typically you start out as a laborer and then you work alongside the different trades like um, masons and carpenters and iron workers and then from there you can learn a trade and get into that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's in my understanding a lot of this um, is set up like apprenticeships so you um, go right alongside someone who's been in the business for a long time doing that work and then learning hands-on which you know how cool is that because you don't often get that in you know an office setting or in other areas to have that hands-on supplement to you know, life experiences and or if there actually was a degree or training, I think is critical because you just can't prepare for every possibility that is going to arise until you get in there and you roll up your sleeves and you start doing something, right? Um, so I love that. Um, Amy, I was wondering about the agricultural uh, background <laughs> and how you applied that. Um, kudos to you for not being afraid to, you know, I think sometimes as women, um, confidence is what keeps us holds us back from pursuing things that might be a little outside of the box, construction being one of those, right? And then you add that layer of, oh, wait a minute, I'm like trained in agricultural studies. Is that going to be applicable? And did I waste my time getting that degree, right? And so, you know, it's, I, I give you so much, um, kudos for just going ahead and not letting that be a barrier to you, you know, and going, okay, uh, so what, <laughs> you know, no. so I had this background. Um, I'm confident in, enough in my ability to learn something new. Um, I feel good about this organization being able to train me in something new, and I'm going to go for it. You know, and I think that that message is super important for women to take away from this, um, not to be afraid to step outside the box, right? Um, Absolutely. And I, I like to think I was pretty lucky with my first job. It was, like I said, it was at Secura headquarters. And I was lucky to have a great superintendent who really took me under his wings and helped teach me things uh -huh. and be patient with me and people need to realize that when they're thinking about taking that chance there's always going to be somebody here especially at cd smith who's going to take them under their wings and teach them mm -hmm. it's our awesome. culture it's our journey you have to do it that's awesome 
That's awesome. Well, um, I can't think of anything else to ask you, ladies. Did you have anything else you wanted to add to the conversation that you know might have come to you as we were uh, talking here? Was there anything else you wanted to bring up? I would just say if there's any young girls or women who are interested in the construction industry and they're not sure where to get started, that we would welcome the opportunity to have them come and job shadow um, somebody here at CD Smith and we'd be happy to answer any of their questions. Mm, that's awesome. Yeah, I mean, I think that too, like, uh, there's so much of a push uh, at younger ages now, you know, already by high school, um, they're wanting you to decide on what career path to take. And I've often, you know, thought with my daughters, like, you don't have enough life experience yet to, to make that decision. So to be able to go and, you know, check things out, to do a tour, to do a job shadow for a day, I think is hugely important. And I love that you're um, open and welcoming to that as well. So I would be remiss um, today if I didn't also give a shout out to some of the other partners here in our greater Fond du Lac uh, community who are also well known in um, the construction industry. Um, not just locally, but statewide and in some cases nationally as well. So we've got Michaels here. We've also got Excel Engineering. We have JF Ahern. These are all partners um, to each other, really, in a lot of cases. Um, and I, I just want to thank them for the work that they're all doing uh, to move our infrastructure forward, our hopefully uh, the opportunities for women forward as well. Um, this is all really important work, and I love that all of these businesses are doing that here in Fond du Lac. So, Amy and Sarah, thank you for coming today and talking with us about your unique journeys in the space of construction. Um, as again, we celebrate Women in Construction Week, uh, and this is going to wrap up this edition of Project Table Talk. If you want to learn more about the construction industry, or any open positions at C.D. Smith, because we heard how great it is to work there, visit cdsmith.com and also visit their Facebook or LinkedIn pages for more on Women in Construction Week. They're gonna be posting some videos, uh, day in the life of women in construction and more. And as for us, we will see you again on our next Project Table Talk, which will be the third week of March, and we will be picking up again on our second in our three-part series focusing on mental health. We'll be talking with um, our two women of achievement who are both therapists here in the area, as well as inviting a guest from ASTOP, the um, sexual abuse center here in town to discuss how we can heal from um, sexual assault and child sexual abuse as we head into April as Sexual Assault Awareness Month. So uh, a real tough topic, but one that um, we hope will bring some insights and, and some healing to people that have been through that as well. So again, ladies, thank you so much for being with us today. And I appreciate everyone who tuned in to listen to this another Project Table Talk. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.